Moving on now to the data item on the agenda, uh, I give the floor to our colleague, Mr Kelly. You have five minutes, Mr Kelly. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, it won't take five minutes because of the pressing uh, time restrictions which we have right now. But just uh, generally to say that the uh, regulation and its uh, proposals are now entering into a critical stage of discussion and uh, there are 917 amendments in total at the minute and there's obviously big interest from across the political groups. At the outset I just want to say what is happening here reflects in some respects exactly the same points that have been made particularly by Marcus Pieper and Fiona Hall regarding European global competitiveness uh, and the consequences of implementing the regulation as proposed by the Commission and unfortunately also some of the proposals which has come in the rapporteur Mr Albrecht's report to same. So we have to be conscious of that. The impact assessment which we got done prior to Christmas in some respects has been uh, ignored which is surprising but we have to I think at the ITRA committee in particular uh, take that into consideration because at the end of the day it is uh, rather disconcerting to find that an awful lot of uh, people seem to think that if you want to protect business and SMEs, automatically you're not protecting consumers, where in reality they're one and the same constituency. SMEs are consumers that are depending, consumers that are depending on SMEs, and particularly when we talk about creating jobs in the European Union, then we have to take into consideration uh, how legislation will affect industries, particularly in Europe. So a strong voice is vital. And uh, regardless of political groups, I think we have a duty at this committee in particular uh, to try and reflect the needs and the concerns of industry. So I've taken that into consideration in uh, my amendments. I won't go through them all. I will just mention a few that I think that are important. And when the five minutes is up, if I haven't stopped at that stage, uh, you can cut me off. So amendment to Article 2 clarifies anonymisation is outside the scope and that's very important to get that clarified and out of the way. Also the definition of the controller is clarified to state the controller determines the why and the processor the how. Again that's clarity is needed. Then we move on to pseudonymised data and how it's processed and again we had a discussion on that yesterday we have three shadows meetings arranged. The first one took place yesterday. We went through chapter one, two, and part of three. Uh, we're trying to get agreement as a possibility for 77 compromise amendments, but uh, a lot of debate will have to take place in the meantime. But a lot of it, uh, in particular, was controversial around the whole idea of pseudonymized data and encrypted data. So that's something we have to work on a bit uh, further. Uh, then there I have amendments particularly in relation to controller processor and especially a focus on data minimization which again is vital for business. And simplifying also the processor sub processor relationship and in article 26 2D I have deleted for that particular reason to bring that clarity. We also have to be conscious of the cloud and uh, I have an amendment 26 which again reflects data minimization as a reality in that regard. I have a new article 33 which gives network and security information as a legitimate interest. That's very important. Those points have been made to us and I think they're valid. They've taken and we've taken them into consideration. Article 33, paragraph 1, introduces an SME exemption from data protection impact assessments 
because up to 80% of SMEs in the tech sector do not, not last longer than four years. So again, I think again being practical there as opposed to idealistic, which can do a lot of damage, as I've mentioned. We've also, Article 34, one deleted because I want to reduce the bureaucracy of prior consultation, again, adding to the red tape, which we feel is not necessary in certain areas. We have certification mechanisms, Article 39, and then on the international data transfers, which is a big issue, uh, I've introduced the following amendments. I'll just go through one or two of them. Article 42, clarifying relationship between controllers, processors, and sub-processors in international data transfers. Again, a new article, Article 42, 4A, uh, and this is important, I think, data seals and trust marks. And this is an important initiative to reward good corporate governance. Rather than putting the emphasis on compliance, to reward those who show good corporate governance as an initiative. I'm running out of time, so I, I won't delay long. I'll just mention two more. Article 58, uh, 2F, deleted, because the competent DPA should be able to draw binding corporate rules without having to submit them to the consistency mechanism. And Article 60, also, deletion of the role of the Commission in the consistency, the consistency mechanism. So, time is up. That's enough for the moment. Thank you. Thank you very much, a dear colleague, for sticking to your time. And now Mrs. Tikau has the floor. Three minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. Vreau să mulțumesc domnului Kelly pentru cooperarea de care dă. Thank you very much, and I would also like to thank Mr. Kelly, who's been working. Stila. Yesterday, we had a, a very interesting and very useful meeting, which has uh, already borne fruit. Now, on the amendments, we are going to support all amendments which call for a reduction of the Commission's rights in the area of delegated acts, so that the Commission gets uh, as few delegated acts as possible, particularly for technology neutrality, privacy by design, and privacy by default. We will also call for this regulation to apply to all institutions of the European Union. I don't know why these strict rules should only apply to businesses and SMEs and not to the European institutions who also deal with uh, personal data. I also think that it's very important for some of the definitions to be clarified. Yesterday we talked about uh, amendments on uh, anonymized data and pseudo-anonymized data. And as uh, Mr. Kelly emphasized yesterday, there is need for further discussion on this and a debate on this because these are very important points in the overall concept. These definitions are very important. There's one other aspect which we feel is very important, and that is in relation to international agreements. Through amendments, we have proposed a transition period of five years so that international agreements which are signed will come into force, but at the same time negotiations can begin so that these international agreements can be adapted to this EU regulation on uh, personal data, so that the agreements wouldn't be abolished, but that they would gradually be adapted. I'm thinking particularly of the PNR register of uh, air passengers, as you know, uh, the whole issue of personal data was very controversial in relation to that dossier. And it's also very important that we know which authorities are the competent authorities. What's important for us is that we don't get a weaker, watered-down regulation than the current directive. And that's why we want to beef up some aspects of it. For example, the fact that uh, 
individuals have to give their consent and that it has to be very clear consent and that the whole system should not become too bureaucratic. We're also concerned about the profile for citizens and data leakage. There we think it's very important that uh, we should support the Commission position. We have proposed 72 hours, and that's a bit more flexible than the 24 hours already proposed. And we're also in favor of a one-stop shop at international level. I think it would be good. I hope that we'll be able to work together well with all of the rapporteurs. It's important that this regulation be simple, that there not be too much red tape, and that it be easily understandable. Thank you, Chair. Um, we tabled also from the ALDE group, uh, um, together with my colleagues, uh, some uh, amendments aiming at securing proportionality and flexibility in this uh, regulation. Um, while we, we've been working on clarifying the definitions of personal data and consent, uh, specifying that only the data making an individual directly identifiable is subject to this regulation, and that consent should be informed and unambiguous rather than explicit. On the main establishment, we want to ascertain uh, that a controller based outside the EU can name a representative in the Union and benefit from the one-stop shop. The same principle should apply to a group of undertakings. We have also worked on separating data protection from other fields of legislation, such as competition and employment law, in order to ensure clarity and avoid conflicts with member states' existing legislation. Moreover, we believe that specific sectors, some of which are already overregulated, should not be burdened and their activity should not be impeded by this regulation, and I'm referring to the credit, credit and leasing industries as well as research and health care. We have also defined the role and responsibilities of the data controllers and processors. In our view, the controllers should deal specifically with the purposes of the processing, while processors should handle the conditions and means. On the same principle, it should be the controllers alone responsible for carrying out privacy impact assessments. We have also introduced a number of exemptions for small and medium-sized enterprises, first of all, in order to ensure that they do not have to designate a data protection officer or carry out privacy impact assessments in the first three years of their activity. We also believe that only those small and medium-sized enterprises that have processing of personal data as their core business should be subject to the provision of this uh, regulation. Uh, there is no doubt that we should craft the right framework for protecting personal data. Let us not forget, however, the difficult economic situation for the industry, and we have to avoid, by all means, prescriptive legislation that does not enhance personal data protection but could hamper economic competitiveness of our industry. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now Mrs. Anders' daughter has the floor. Thank you, Mrs. Chair. Um, this committee has a history of showing industrial leadership for the European Union. We have done so with the telecommunications legislation at the European level and with the spectrum policy. Especially now in times of economic crisis, we should not let go of this tradition. Now, more than ever, strong leadership is required for the European markets and we can't let ourselves get too distracted by or submissed towards the demands of a small part of industry. We are asked to maintain a level of data protection for European citizens that has already been in place for the better part of the last 20 years. We have spent those past 20 years extensively investigating the effects of that data protection. We have academic research and we have the reports made by our own policy departments. They all show that we need stronger data protection. Citizens and small businesses do not have the required confidence in data protection laws at their current state. We have additional concerns about what will happen with the rule of law and national security concerns. Many member states in the European Union have dire experiences of what happens when private individuals lose control over their information and their identities. This is why we have data protection laws. Because we want for our societies to be strong democracies where people have the right to privacy, 
and to control over their personal information. And still, when I meet people my age and I talk to them about changing or improving policy in this field, I face staggering levels of resignation and cynicism. And it's very difficult not to blame them. The task before us is really like so simple. We have the scientific base, we have our institutional reports, uh, we have the data protection authorities from the member states and the Article 29 working group experiences. Our committee has commissioned two studies on data protection and innovation, both of which conclude that the data protection framework in Europe has given EU industry a competitive edge internationally. Uh, but now we have 917 amendments tabled in the committee. Many of them seriously undermine the fundamental human rights of EU citizens, and if they pass, they would likely do irrevocable damage to consumer trust in companies, competitive strength of, of our domestic industries, and the voters' trust in us. Um, so I agree with the aforementioned uh, comments that we need to at least preserve the level of protection we had in 1995. I think this is the least ambitious target we could set for ourselves. And I call on you, colleagues and members of this committee, to uphold the tradition of strong political and industrial leadership. It has been successful in the past, and there is no reason for it not to be successful again. Now is not the time to give in to the short-sighted demands of special interests, but the time to set the direction and make decisions that we know that our constituents want and that they actually have also the right to. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mrs. Anders' daughter. Now, Mr. Chichester. Um, thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, I thought I was going to help your time management by not asking to speak. So all I'll say is I'd like to commend the rapporteur for the good work he's doing, and I strongly support him. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much, Mr. Sister. And now I'll give the floor to Mrs. De Castillo. Thank you very much, Chairman. I know, that, I know there isn't uh, much time. I'll, I'll, try to, I I'll try to be quick. I'm not as quick as Mr. Chichester, Chichester, but nonetheless fairly brief. I think if you look at the reasons behind of this uh, uh, regulation, the, the, the data protection law of 95 is very much linked to the development of the digital society. And I think in this context, it's right, really, and our colleague is right, Mr. Kelly, in the thrust that he's given to this legislation. But there are specific elements which can affect the digital reality and things that didn't exist in the past. For, for example, he didn't mention this, but, but this is something we've been discussing all the time. There's the whole question of competition, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The, the competencies of the controller and the processor, their powers, their responsibilities, and what we've heard from the Commission. Well, I think with all goodwill in the world, uh, what, was, what, the, what the Commission proposed really it, it does create some uh, confusion about the responsibilities here. So I think the proposals that have been made here by Mr. Kelly and the proposals made by many of the shadows allow us to ensure that at least from the e trade Committee you will see a clarification emerging. We'll get a clarification and also a contribution to improving uh, the role of these key uh, figures in the digital world, the controller and the processor. Processor, but also would do that without uh, damaging in any way the dynamism of the technology that's being developed uh, in the digital society and on internet. It's crucial that we have uh, innovation. Uh, our techno new technology is very dynamic, and we shouldn't uh, uh, be th th uh, throttling uh, innovation with uh, rules. Uh, we don't want uh, uh, we don't want rules that w will not be useful in practice because technology goes much faster than our legislative proposals. I think this is a very balanced proposal. We've discussed it uh, uh, more than once, in fact, twice or even three times on this committee. So I'd just like to thank the rapporteur again, thank him for his work, and I think his work has been excellent. Thank you very much, Mrs. Del Castillo, and now Mr. Vidal Cuadras. Thank you, Mrs. Chair. Indeed, the overhaul of the Personal Data Protection Directive adopted in 1995 is vital in light of the leaps that technology has made since then. That has been spectacular change. 
The Commission's proposal comes at the right time and I hope will lead to a harmonization of data protection across the Union and um, will provide peace of mind and tranquility for all those who use Internet. Um, I thank Mr. Kelly for his work on this opinion and especially agree with his aim to reduce administrative burdens for enterprises, preventing innovation and economic growth being chalked by too much red tape. With this goal in mind, one example of how we can ease the pressure on the data controller is by proposing that they demonstrate compliance with this regulation if required to do so, and not for every operation, which would considerably increase their workload. Industries must be able to carry out their work safe in the knowledge that they are using data for a legitimate interest, for example, enterprises using data to safeguard against fraudulent behavior and network operators collecting customer data on energy consumption in order to create personalized profiles and make efficiency recommendations, all these things. And indeed, anonymization, a pseudonymization, can uh, be greatly helpful in this regard. For the same reasons, rigid timelines for reporting data protection, breaches and inflexible sanctions should be avoided. So, uh, good job, Mr. Kelly, and um, we will uh, support you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vidal del Cuadro. And now I'll give the floor to the Commission. Thank you. The Commission sees the amendments. Thank you. I'll be brief, Madam Chair. We're very interested to see the amendments. We have to make sure that uh, we create a secure regulation for the future on uh, personal data, which will make it possible, on the one hand, for those concerned to enjoy maximum protection, prote protection at the same time, which will respond to the legitimate interests of uh, businesses and those responsible for processing the data. The Commission is always in favour of avoiding red tape wherever that is possible, and uh, our proposals have been made uh, bearing that in mind. At the same time, we have to ensure that uh, there is legal certainty in the rules in this area and that the protection of uh, personal data is something which is good for any economic activity and that it is not something which is at odds with uh, competitiveness. In fact, it can be a precondition for greater competitiveness in Europe. Without proper protection of uh, personal data, we will not see growth in areas such as the digital agenda because citizens have to be able to have confidence that uh, industry will deal with their personal data in a proper way. The Commission, in its proposals, has tried to retain the level of protection in the 9546 Directive, and we hope that we uh, will not in any way drop below that level of protection with this regulation, and we will certainly study the amendments very closely from that point of view. Thank you very much. And now I'll give the floor back to Mr. Kelly. You've got five minutes to draw some conclusions. Uh, thank you again, Madam Chair, and thanks to all the speakers. I think uh, the points made are very valid and are made very sincerely. And I think uh, at the outset, uh, the word confusion was used once or twice, and I think that's uh, an obligation on us to try and avoid confusion. And I think there is a danger that, uh, particularly where consumers are concerned, an awful lot of them are confused regarding the data that is available on them and how it is used and so forth. But the solution is not necessarily having more regulation, 
it's having clarity and I think that is something we've got to try and work on. Bring clarity to consumers regarding their rights and the use of their data and particularly creating the need for more and more what they call implicit consent isn't necessarily uh, what consumers need because it can lead to what they call a uh, click fatigue uh, that they would just give consent without actually bothering to see what they were giving consent to. So we have to work there at a sensible, practical approach that will guarantee the level of protection that the Commission mentioned that's there since 1995 and maybe even strengthen it, but also make it clear uh, and practicable in its operation. I was pleased that uh, I think, as Sylvia mentioned, uh, delegated acts. We want to reduce those to a minimum because the need for delegated acts is, in some respects, a reflection of a job that isn't well done or properly done. So there will be need for some, but certainly not for as many as has been proposed by the Commission. Also, the one-stop shop is something that uh, many business interests have said is absolutely vital. It is one of the fundamentals if you are to have a regulation across Europe. A one-stop shop makes absolutely perfect sense. And again, we have to ensure that we don't dilute that to make it again somewhat uh, meaningless at the end of the day. And I think that's a very important point. The whole question of controller processor, again, we have to avoid uh, confusion there. I think uh, Pillar was mentioning that. Again, the, cl the clarity needed the controller uh, dealing with one particular aspect, the processor dealing with the other, the why as opposed to the how. And again, if we keep that as our uh, modus operandi, I think uh, we won't go far wrong. Uh, one of the proposals that is causing a lot of difficulties for SMEs is the need for a DPO, Data Protection Officer. Again, I think it's uh, too uh, demanding at this particular time and uh, a lot of uh, businesses are worried about it. So again, we have to be practical and uh, just coming up with an arbitrary figure regardless of the amount of data the company processes does not make sense. It might be practical from a mathematical point of view and easily to understand, but uh, in reality there's a big difference between various companies uh, regardless of their size and again, we have to work on that. Uh, one or two areas who are very worried about the regulations there at the moment, and I know this from even this morning, I hosted a hearing, a breakfast hearing for some elements of the financial sector. They're very worried about some of the implications, and so are the health sector. And I think we have to be cognizant of that. So they use a lot of data. Uh, so again, we cannot uh, arrive at a situation where we have unintended consequences which will damage and inhibit uh, the health sector and the financial sector who have legitimate interests in these particular areas. So that's something I'm conscious of and I would hope that others will take those views into consideration. So in conclusion, I think we all want to keep the level of protection for individuals as strong and as stringent as possible, but at the same time, we do not want to inhibit the growth of SMEs that are already there, and particularly innovation, which we are all talking about is so necessary for Europe, and which Europe has been uh, somewhat uh, uh, behind the curve in, in recent times. I think we can right, strike the balance, and I welcome the views and proposals of my colleagues. Thank you very much.